and we're back fashion dolls all right so we're going to continue and pick up where we left off with our interview with jonathan jazz anderson and his hit iconic roles because he's done so many all right so i'm going to forward this to jonathan make sure you guys head on over and subscribe to style by stevie right now there's so many amazing great interviews up there you guys can catch out all the replays. We are now heading into the month of February. So this week is What a Man Week. Leading up to the new month, February, we have some more amazing guests coming on. So we're going to pick up where we left off, all right? It was sort of like a glitch. IG is true. We are good. Let me add Jonathan back. Oh. All right, are we good now? I see me. Can you hear me? Yeah, it, yeah, it looks a lot better. Yeah, it's not breaking up. Perfect. All okay. right. So we were talking about Antoine Fuqua. You said you worked with uh, him on the project for Brooklyn's yes, Finest. Yes, He's working on the Michael Jackson bio. So it has been revealed today that his nephew could possibly potentially be playing okay. the role of Michael Jackson. And they look just alike. Split mm. image. And it's That's scary. Okay. So make sure you guys go and check that out. I seen it on the Great Juice, great news source. Definitely go and check it out over there. So you've done shows like White Collar, Law and Order, SVU, and I we were talking about the character outlook and you know what you want your character to look like. So out of all the characters that you portrayed, because oh no, I think you kicked him out. Let me add Jonathan back, ladies and gentlemen. Give me one sec. All right. Yeah, it does that. Okay, we back. We're back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look, back. they try to stop. Look, they try to stop the greatness, but they can't. They can't. Right. They can't. They can't. That's right. We here. So we're gonna continue on. I was talking about Law and Order and all the my, other my shows. Character. Look, I think one of my favorite characters to this date would be playing the Pimp Timmer on Law and Order. Uh, you know, I, I, it, it was just. Exciting to be able to, to bring uh, my little twist and, and turn to it and, you know, to have like the that Haggerty actually like enjoy the thing that I was doing, you know, the, the impromptu thing, the thing that I, I brought to the character was beautiful, you know. Um, they allowed me to play. Ice T was great. Uh, you know, Kelly was great. I mean, everybody that, that was on that set was just great. So I, I think that that to this day will have to probably be one of my, my favorite characters. Tim of the Pimp. <laughs> Okay, okay. So we're working alongside a hip hop giant and hip hop icon like with Ice like Ice T. What was it like? And did he give you any advice or pointers while you were guys were on the set? Look, Ice look, was just him. Was it was himself. You know, it wasn't the rapper Ice or was it, you know, nah, he was just cool, he was down to earth, he was uh, approachable. Uh, listen, he actually did my voicemail, man. You know what I mean? Like, so when you call my voicemail, you hear his voice. Uh, he, he was a wonderful person to work with. Uh, he, he, he was open to new ideas. He loved new talent. And he was excited, you know what I'm saying, to, to get to the page. So, I mean, it was brilliant working with him, man. He was a, a blessed individual, like, truly a sincerity to the heart. Okay, let me read Alan Yankee's comments. How many bios are they going to do on Whitney or Mike? We know everything except the SSI number. L listen, side note to that. <laughs> yeah, I'm um, <laughs> Y'all know I'm a big Whitney Houston fan. And yes, the actress who played her just recently in the project, she executed it very, very well. She did excellent. So shout outs to Naomi, the actress who portrayed Whitney in the most recent film, I Want to Dance with Somebody. Great film. I'm hearing all the great reviews. The other Whitney Houston projects, though, yeah. But to portray somebody that big, speaking of bios and legacy, I'm glad you brought that up, Ali Yankee, because you've been in the game for a long time, Jonathan. If you were to portray or do a bio on any one that is passed on or that is currently living, who would you like to portray? Uh, I, I probably say hands down, Marvin Gaye. Okay, uh, I definitely see that. Yeah, you know, like to really be able to dive into that. I mean, because he was going into just the music, you know. I mean, he was a, a brilliant individual, you know. I mean, to to be able to touch just a little bit of of, of what he 
ooh, went through in his life, you know, leading the autobiography and, you know, like, ooh, it would be, it would be an honor, you know. I, I feel like, uh, he's one of those icons that, that will forever in the day remain legendary, you know what I'm saying? Like, so Marvin Gaye would be beautiful to tell, you know, opportunity ever arisen. Now, who would you like to play you in a bio about your life? I couldn't think. You know, look, that's too far ahead in the moments for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, look, I'm, in, I'm still enjoying me playing me or, you know, me having chat. Look, you know, I, I wouldn't even know to think right now. I mean, somebody's special at the time. But, you know, right now I'm enjoying all these moments of doing, doing what I love to do and uh, learning how to, to, to live in that love of what I do when I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, look, anybody that, look, look, I don't know. I couldn't even answer that, you know. I mean, these moments right now in my life are beautiful. And uh, I realize that I spent a lot of time not enjoying these moments uh, as I should have before. Uh, so it's very, uh, it's very prevalent for me to stay focused on uh, every every moment that matters, which is every second, every minute, every you know, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Now, one thing, well, a couple things people don't know about you is that you also provided the voice of Jeffrey O.G. Lot Cross <laughs> and Grand Auto San yeah, Andreas. So tell us what was that like being able to provide your voice for a video uh, game character. That's major. Look, it, it, it was so... It, it was so crazy because, again, not crazy. Uh, it was God and whatever he wanted because I actually wasn't supposed to do the voice. I was doing the motion capture, which was big for us actors. We would be able to do the motion capture on, on, on a live, you know, uh, interactive video game such as Grand Theft Auto. Uh, so I guess they wanted to give the, the voice to Mike Epps. Mike Epps turned it down, and the next thing I know, I get a call from my manager at the time, and she's like, well, kid, you must have done something right because they want to bring you back for the voice. Uh, then to find out how big it became, then to find out how much I added, to, you know, to look, I kid you not, like a lot of my friends come out the woodworks now, and I don't realize, I didn't realize how old I was, older than them, but you know, they'll say, oh no, I just found out that you was, you know, I grew up to you as a kid. I mean, these kids really did grow up to me as a kid. And so I didn't realize how, how much of an impact that I made, you know, because I don't play video games, you know. Look, I can, have won an Oscar, but to my son, Grand Theft Auto was the epitome of everything. Like I, I won the cake, the prize, you know, like it was just, you know, out the ballpark. Um, so now I'm actually just diving in to find out how influential and, and, and just predominate that character I made was, you know, because it was all me. It was all me. The rock star cast said, come in, you know, just do what you do. You, you like what you did when you were doing it. So just go over the top, have fun with it. You know, enjoy it. And, and so I, I think that that's one of the best characters because I had a chance to just have, have fun. And it wasn't about a right or a wrong. It was just going in and play. And as an actor, being a kid and being able to play was, was the best place for me, you know? Now, another thing people don't know about you is that you are the winner of the Global Film Festival Award. And yeah. you are a 10 time award winner. Um, yeah. You've done some short films as well, too. So Sundance just passed away, um, not passed away, but Sundance just came and went so fast. Um, I had an actress who I interviewed not too long ago. She went to Sundance. So shout out to my girl, Danielle Ward. She's coming back for our Girl Talk panel in April. So make sure okay. you guys stay tuned for that. Um, Sundance, are there any plans? Do you plan on doing any more writing for script uh, uh, or anything? Right now, my plans are every day waking up to be happy. Every day yes. waking up to be a service for other people. Every day waking up to learn and grow and build, you know what I'm saying, to be a beautiful, spirited individual, you know what I'm saying, like to, to, to find that love again, to, to continue my recovery and discovery, to continue my growth, to, you know, just do more and do more and do more. Like, uh, to, right now, I am allowing God to move my steps for me. And wherever the universe and who says go is where I'm going to follow. How about that one? Yeah. I love that. That's where and, I'm at. And always, we're in times of uncertainty. And so much has happened. We've officially made it into 2023. And I just had a conversation 
with one of my girlfriends taught when her caught up on the phone. And the night of New Year's Eve, I said, I can't believe we made it into 2023. So many losses, so many things have happened throughout the years of 2021 to 2022 to now still be here in 2023, fortunate, healthy, move on. It's a blessing for each and every one of us. True. So I tell people all the time, give yourself a pat on the back because you made it into greatness. Like I do vision boards and I'm always foreshadowing and putting things into perspective. So for you, how important is manifestation? Uh everything you, you know i mean that's the only way to keep it really complete into your destiny of who you're supposed to be the, the manifestation of what you believe what your, your power of belief is very very important you know what you think what you feel what you emote is what you eventually you know get back you know what you uh, allow yourself to become you know like success is, is it can't be obtained see that's what i didn't realize before I was trying to obtain success, but like anything that's obtained, whether it's a car or whether it's clothing or whether it's a piece of jewelry, that can be taken. Somebody can take that. Like whatever you have on, whatever you, they can take that. But once you become something, nobody or nothing can take from it. Like if you learned another language and somebody came up to you and said, look, you better give me all that Spanish you learned last year. They, you, well, they couldn't, you get what I'm saying? I, I know it's being facetious and funny, but it's the truth. Once you become anything, so the, the way that you, Handle your, your your resources and utensils to to, to become uh, better at, at at what you want in your life and, and, and look get a chief definite aim so that you can understand the who what when where why and how of it you know uh, yeah it is important the, the way you wake up the way you dump your garbage in the morning the way that you continue to move on your daily path and journey the way you check in with yourself the things that you're doing to make sure that you're good because you have to understand nothing could be obtained. Do, do anything else but happiness. Growth, life, you know, uh, creation, uh, power of manifestation. It can only be created beautifully through happiness. So that's the first thing I, I, I find that people, you know, don't even understand that it's free. And if you really understand a lot of people, you'll see that they, they're very unhappy. And uh, it's a sad state of the because I realized I was that person too. I was living in that unhappiness as well. So for me, it's like, like I'm reborn and reawakened. You know, I'm like a child from so from desire to the world. Thoughts are uh, just clear and fresh. And, and it's like, look, I'm reading a book right now called The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Mm -hmm. And it's like my life has a rebirth. And it, it's, it's beautiful, you know, it, it really is. I love what you just said. And the reason why my face sort of light up when you said rebirth, because I say this all the time to my Alan Yankee, I know he's watching so many others, they've heard me say this word, rebirth. It's a process of starting over. Every time you go into a, a, a new year, you're basically restarting over. It's like a rebirth. You're reborn again. You're starting over as a whole new person. The things that you wanted to do in one year, you're not doing no longer. The things that you wanted to take along with you that you already like have planned with you for the new year is becoming to begin again. So you're being reborn in the process. And for me, change is beautiful. The whole thing about being uh, reborn again and starting over. So yeah. I had to do that. And, uh, Look, that, and that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful train of thought. That's a beautiful uh, a, a vision of kaleidoscope. You know what I'm saying? Like, because everything is all about how you change your kaleidoscope of vision from your visionary perception. You get what I'm trying to say? Your life changes when you change your visionary perception of how you outlook everything, how you outsource, how you, what you look, that's right. And to understand that what happens is we're not allowing the universe to, to, to move. We're not allowing God to do his job. We're, we're, we're worried about everybody else's part, but the part that matters with you. You know? I had to realize I was pointing the finger at everybody else, but then I had to start to point the finger at the, the person who, who really, yeah, it's important to understand self first, because if you can understand self first, then you can understand everything that, 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 that's worth, but, you know, self worth, self love, you know, self growth, I mean, you know, like, yeah, self esteem, yeah, self happiness, yeah. If you're waiting for somebody to do it for you, please, people, don't wait longer than you have to. You know, growth for me is simple now. Easy as A, B, C, one, two, three. And that's 
seeing it before it comes to you don't get caught up in it. But if you happen to, because life does happen, don't stay in it any longer than you have to. You know, uh, uh, for me, my eyesight is woken. I'm a, a woke. And, uh, you know, I, I'm staying risen with my kids folk that's, that's, that's thinking about how your things, how you're learning, how you're growing, how your foundations, how your understanding, how your vibration, energy is key to everything, you know? And when your energy is in line with your spirit, and that's a synergy that can take you unbelievable, unbelievable places, anywhere, anywhere and everywhere. 2023 is the year of free to you and you, free happiness. It's free love, free health. It's health of the new wealth, you know? So live unapologetically in who you are and understand that who you are is enough. And if you can't do that, then, look, the journey continues. How about that one? It doesn't stop, you know? But we have to, I had to, and we, 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 we trace my steps. And we track back. My word is very important. So I, because I, I point the finger at me, I take self responsibility, you know, and acknowledge that first and foremost, because I've I been giving it away, putting it on other people, wondering why I wasn't happy, but they were. Wondering why I wasn't really free. But look, because if you take acknowledgement of the individual that you are, and you allow yourself to be okay with yourself, to give, yes, so that you can start to move and grow. Forgiveness is the first part. Acknowledgement, first. Forgiveness, second. And third is is the rebirth that you get when you allow yourself to live with, with no no jealousy, no fear, no anger, no worry. Those are the things that are the parasite that will take you away from where you need to be at because it's a constant fight between the parasite and the ally. You know, it's the constant subconscious over the conscious, you know, like, and we have to stay in our conscious mind because that's when we're thinking straight. So, but for me, 2023 is everything it's going to be and everything it's supposed to be and everything that I've stopped allowing it to be in my life because it was me, you know? And I had to realize that I, I'm, I'm no longer in that place of space in my life to give it away no more. Yeah. Right. Um, and I think Mikey tried to reach out to you, tried to sh to message you a DM for exclusive, but shut down. Uh, okay, well, look, uh, Mikey, I will hit you back to make sure we get that, you know, together. I didn't even realize, I don't know why I was shut down, but uh, I will hit you back uh, after this and uh, DM you and we can definitely, you know, talk about how we can get that exclusive done because how can I be a service? So thank you for reaching out and I will definitely make sure to, to contact you before the day's end, yeah? Now, speaking of exclusive, Mr. Anderson, you've also done some theater as well too, this, 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 that. Um, and you've also enrolled into Mason Gross School of the Arts. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, you know, Rutgers was the Mason Gross School of the Arts. But uh, Woody King Jr., uh, I mean, in New Federal Theater, you know, that's where a lot of the greats started. You know, Denzel, uh, Samuel Jackson, uh, Morgan Freeman. Uh, so to even be on that stage and in that, in that essence and that presence, it's beautiful. Uh, and we did a play called This, This, and This, That, which was a, a, about a rap group, you know, uh, called The Funky Natives. And it was actually a true story, you know, and I had a beautiful uh, chance of playing a character named Sugar. And the most beautiful part about that one is uh, I was the only one from the cast that was nominated for the Delco Award uh, for Best Male in the Musical. Uh, and that was my first theater project ever. That was my first time joining after. It, uh -oh. Look. I'm here. I'm here. You got me? Okay. Okay, yeah. I got uh, if, yeah, if people would hit me, I'm trying to, you know. Um, so, yeah, that was a beautiful experience. But look, I love stage. Why? It's because it's live and in the moment, you know. And you become a family with the people that you're on stage with because you have to learn to trust each other. You know, you, you, you can understand the communication that goes on on that stage. Yeah, it, it's, it's magical, you know, when you see it and, and it just clicks. And uh, that would be my first love. First and foremost, you know, uh, first time I, I touched the black box theater was when I was in high school. Uh, I went to a performing arts high school, and I had a teacher named Isan Abdul Rahim, and I, I played a character named Sterling and uh, Two Trains Running by August Wilson. Uh, and it was, look, at that point in time, it solidified exactly what I was supposed to be doing in my life. Yeah. And 
You have August Wilson, um, Latanya Richardson, who is the wife of Samuel Jackson. Um, they just did August Wilson, the piano lesson on Broadway. Right. So I mean, a lot of actors, like 2023, 2022 has been the year of Black Broadway. And I would say that because there's been so many POC people of color to shine all over Broadway. What advice would you give to people if they're looking to get into theater? Because it's a big and complete different experience than doing national television, like how we're doing now or right. live. But it's in uh, real right. time in front of an audience. So if you yeah. mess up, the audience can catch on to it. So what advice would you give to actors who are looking to looking, do um, I would say do the research. You know, one thing that, you know, I'm sorry you millions have or just folks have nowadays that we didn't have is the, the, the www, worldwide, everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. so do the research, you know, Google theater, Google, uh, uh, you know, uh, theater. How can I get into theater? How can I find out more about theater? How, you know, how do I go about looking into becoming a theater actor? If you Google it, I guarantee you'll find so much information on the internet. And then you just pick and choose and decipher from, from there what works and what doesn't for you, you know? And that way you're in control of everything. You know, you don't have to leave it to worry about somebody else giving you information or shooting misinformation. You know, if you guide yourself, you know what I'm saying, to the process, the progress, to the progress is in the process, and you, you come up with the answers that you need. And look, when you come up with that so stubbornly, it's something uh, that's beautiful, you know, that can't be. But when you, when you finally figure out something for yourself, you know, I don't know about other people, but for me, it feels wonderful. Because look, I can have the best math teacher in the world, but if I'm not getting, you know, algebra, and I'm not getting it, but when I finally get it, and that, that light bulb hit me, like, oh, that's what it was. That's the discovery. That's worth everything. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, find it yourself. Look, when they say, read the read rainbow, say, take a look. Send them <laughs> you know, yeah, do the, do the research, folks, because... If you put the time in, it shows how much it's worth to you, you know? And so it feels better when you do it because you want to do it. And then you finally get, look, that's where I said, you know, do more than do more than do more, you know? And I didn't ever understand that until I started doing more than doing more than doing more. Because once you complete something, it feels so good to complete it that it, it, it gives you the excitement and the happiness to, to want to complete something else. And then once you complete that, you want to see what else you can complete. So, you know, get it done and, 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 and find out how much fun it is to, 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 to come to the understanding for yourself. You know, um, beautiful thing, people. You know, I, I, had to, I had to take a step back from a lot of this because I, I was caught in a little bit of the line, like, you know, uh, trailer, you know, top of show, uh, what's this, what's that. And look, I'm becoming a kid again. Like, you know, so it's, it's beautiful because I, I, I want to, I want to learn again. I, I want to be the student this, this time around. 2023, I want to learn as much as I can so that I can understand, so that I can get back, so that we can continue to allow the dream of the world to continue, you know, and manifestation and creation, because the power of creation and imagination is beautiful, man, and we got to stay grounded and rooted in that, especially nowadays when we're living in such a tumultuous place that are taken away from that happiness and taken away from us being able to, to create beautiful things. And, and look, it matters the most because we have so much inside of us that's that's inherently there to give back that was put from a higher tower. And that divine intervention is a beautiful thing, man. And so look, give everything that you have back, you know. I mean all your beautiful uh talent inside, all all, all the energy that all, give it back. Give it to the world, you know what I mean? Because we need that love again, man. You know, we've been separated for far too long. And it's trying to be share that love, pass the peace. It's just living happiness, man, you know, and, and, and take care of one another, man. Absolutely. All right, sorry, for being, sorry, sorry if I'm being a little, you know, uh, okay, okay. No, you're good, because people okay. need to know this. There's a lot of actors that are trying to get into theater, and they don't realize the 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 end work that goes into it. Like, it's look, a lot. It's sorry a lot to cut people go through coaching. That's right, that's right. right. It's hard to cut the train of thoroughs. Uh, mama, uh, queen, look, look, you, you, you're giving me deeper right now. I don't know, like, oh, I'm, I'm loving what I'm saying. You're giving me Diana Ross, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, ladies, take it through. Okay. Um, listen, queen, if you need to know anything about anything, feel free to hit me up and contact me. How about that one? I'll allow my, my information to be put out there, you know what I'm saying, so that anyone that 
has a question about anything regarding acting, regarding life, regarding, look, just need to talk, just need to, to be heard. Feel free to contact me because that's what I'm here for. So I, I can be that bridge for others to walk over. How about that one? Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. And I hope everyone is watching takes something from this, these gems that are being dropped throughout this conversation that can help them in the long run with their acting career or getting into theater or whatever. So we're going to do some games with Jonathan here, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Are you guys ready? The first one is called The Rapid Five. And Jonathan has to tell us five things that he can't live without. It can be his favorite drink. It can be his favorite football team. Just a passion, a goal, whatever you go through on a daily. And then the next one is going to be called Turn the Tables. And this is where my guests get to ask me questions, as many as they want. And it's sort of a way for me to cut the velvet rope to let people inside to get to know who Miss Stevie is. Because I'm a very, very candid and private person. So you're kind of getting to know a little bit about me through the questioning for my new viewers out there. All right. So we're going to start off with the rapid five. What are five things? that Jonathan can't live without? God, love, peace, happiness, and family. Mm. God, love, peace, happiness, and family. Yeah, that's right. All the time, but that's, that's right. high. That's right. That's my five rapid. All right. <laughs> All right, fashion dolls. So it's <laughs> time to turn those Tables. For those of you who want to get to know a little bit about Miss Stevie and just, um, okay, this is my way to cut the level rope. So Jonathan is going to ask me some questions, as many as he wants. And okay. I have to answer them. And this is for the new viewers out there to get to know a little bit about me and passions, goals, dreams, fashion, whatever it is. All right? That's so right. take it away, right. Jonathan. Look, this, this is how we're going to do this turn the table since it's my, it's my turn to turn the table. Uh, and I'm in charge. Okay, watch yourself. Um, I give you three questions. Why I say that is because uh, I, I have to cut a little short because, uh, and listen, this is how honest and true and transparent I am because my life is, is, is my story to tell and share for others. I have to, I have, right. a therapy session, I have a therapy session. So I'm going to give you three questions and then I'm going to get to my therapy session because it's important to check in. So first and foremost, uh, how did you get started in this business? I started off right after high school. Believe it or not, almost everybody that gets in this industry starts off very, very young. And when I came on the scene doing Style by Stevie, I came in with no experience at all. I was kind of cocky, didn't know what I was doing. And people were just like, yes, girl, yes. But I still was young at the time. But now that I've evolved and I came into my own as a woman, I'm 29 about to be pushing 30 it's like when you hit 30 that light bulb goes off and i see a shift i see a change and even some of my classmates that i went to school with watch the show they watch the platform they watch the interviews and they'll say wow she's changed a lot it's something different about her and that's because of life experience you know through each each there's a cycle there's a phase that you go through in your life mm -hmm. and during that phase of my life, I didn't know what I was doing when I started this platform. It was just so random on a whim, like Style by Stevie. The name is catchy and everything, but I started talking on topics that go on in the world, from elections to okay. everything. So okay. That's just to make a long story short, because I know you said you have to be somewhere, so I'm not going to keep you. Look, look, look. No rushing, no rushing. I'll let you talk as long as you want. Okay, second <laughs> question. Uh, how was it uh, for you? And transgender coming into this industry, uh, period. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. Oh, I no. have two strikes. No, let me take that. Let me take that back. To get this industry, how was it coming into your own being transgender in your life? How did that affect? How did that? How did that? What is, how? How was that for you? Um. Well, I've got three strikes. I'm in the LGBTQ plus community. Um, I'm black. I am a woman. So it's like all of these three things is like what hinders and holds me back. So I try to push through these obstacles that people define as, yes, it, it is difficult, believe it or not. But I've had my challenges and I'm still getting through, still getting through. And with platforms like this, being vocal and speaking out 
is what is encouraging the whole world to just say, That's okay, right. change is happening. And I see it That's within the industry as well, too, in this business. Beautiful. Beautiful. Look, I want to first say thank you for your service. And, and I want to applaud you and say how proud I am of you uh, for your strength and your courage to continue to be exactly who you are. That's right. So the third question is, what does 2023 have in store for Miss Stevie? Well, I'm I'm over here just glowing and beaming because it's so much. I have so many great things. Like I literally planned back in 2022 on what I wanted to work on for the new year. And right. going into this year, I said that I'm not going to take no. I've had so many no's, but I'm going to be persistent. I'm going to fight. I'm going to continue to be dedicated to what I do. And that is bringing people joy because we've been in such a dark time with this pandemic and things going on where we've mm -hmm. been literally inside the house all the time and you're looking at the walls and it's just driving you crazy. I love you too, brother. That's my Cheers. brother, Scott. Always hey, encouraging. Scott. Beautiful. Giving a nice word. And that's what we need. Um, so we continue to. That's what I'm looking forward to for 2023. Look, those answers, my question for Stevie on the turnaround, turn the TV. Uh, look, you are a beautiful spirit. Uh, you are a blessed individual. Uh, I am blessed to be on this platform to be able, you know what I'm saying, to, to talk my life story and to give a little bit of, of love and happiness to anybody that's out there viewing, anybody that who, who will view, you know, like, listen, we have to learn that the love that we lost these last couple of years is still there. And we have to start to begin again to understand what it is to be a friend again, you know? So, look. <laughs> You are special, and I appreciate your special. And I want you to continue to, to let your special shine brighter than any light to ever think to shine in the sky. I want you to continue to let your beautiful past those whoever you reach, wherever you may go, because you are the future of what understanding truly is, what love truly is. And I will be proud to be on any show, any venue, anything that you're a part of. If you need Mr. Anderson, you let me know. I'll be there. Yeah, look, I can't sing, but look, you know. Uh, I love y'all. I love, love you. Stevie, I'm out. Uh, uh, please hit me. Tell me what you need me to send as far as links, any, any information that people need. But I am reachable, and I want you guys to stay in your happy place. Because when you stay in your happy place, it leaves you with a happy face. Yeah? I'll talk, talk to you guys later. Thank you, Stevie. You're wonderful. Love you. you. Love you, too. Ladies and gentlemen, Jonathan Jazz Anderson. Did you guys enjoy that combo? Manifest my sister bears power and believing. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Sky. I yeah, I was gonna cry. I was trying not to tear up, but Melanie would kill me. So all of this beauty that you guys are seeing today is sponsored by a girl, Melanie Nalamai Bridgers. I, I know it looked like I was trying not to. I was trying to fight back tears. So I'm going to leave you guys with an encouraging word of the day. It is What a Man Week. So we all throughout this week, we have some amazing black men coming on the platform. You guys seen the Girl Talks last week, so you guys can go and check them out. But we have, this, this week is for the brothers. So tomorrow coming on Style by Stevie, we have actor, director, Jason Toller is going to be here. And at 3 p.m., we are going global with actor Kennedy Samario II. So make sure you guys tune in at 3 p.m. You guys tune in at 4 p.m. with Jason. All right, so I'm going to leave you guys with a final thought of the day, which comes from Harvey Firestein. Accept no one's definition of your life and define yourself. So be true to who you are, fashion dolls, and most importantly, stay styled by Stevie. I hope you guys love the look for today. I chose denim. It's been a minute since I... Take care.